If you're creating and selling digital designs, you can actually use a public domain website, like in this case, Pixneo. So in this video, I'm gonna walk through how this site works. It's completely free, public domain images, and I'm gonna use an image to create a digital download that you could sell on Etsy or Creative Fabrica. Should be fun, let's jump in. So you may never have heard of Pixneo before, so let's just jump in and do a quick overview of this. So this is a public domain website where there's lots of different photographs that are available and they're all in the public domain. So I'm just gonna use this one here, for example, on the right-hand side, this sunflower. So I'm gonna pop that open and we can see here that on the right-hand side, it says Pixneo license free to use. And if I click on that free to use, it's gonna open up another page and it says what is allowed. All photos can be used free for commercial or non-commercial use. You don't have to give attribution and you can also modify the downloaded photos. So in other words, we can change them if we download them. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do here. So I'm gonna grab some sort of photograph that we can then use to make a digital design. Okay, so there's a couple different ways you can make digital designs from photographs specifically. So here's my picture of my wolf. I'm gonna click over on the right-hand side, free download, and I'm gonna just download the original size, which is the largest, I'll click the download button. And now I open up the image inside of Inkscape, and if you've never heard of Inkscape before, it's a free vectorizing tool that you can download if you've got a Windows computer. So I've inserted my photo here, and I can just simply go up here to Path, Trace Bitmap, I can click the update button on the right hand side and I can see how light or dark I wanna make this. Simply by changing the threshold and clicking update, I can see it's going lighter or darker. So it's just a matter of playing around with it, finding what you like, and then clicking the apply button. It's then gonna think for a bit and it's going to give you basically back a shadow. Now, I wanna point out, this is a terrible cut file. So I know what happens is whenever I talk about making digital files, people come out of the woodwork and they say, hey, that's a crappy cut file. I totally admit it, guilty as charged. When I click on the edit paths by node button, you can see here all these paths, that's way too many paths. So you wouldn't wanna sell this as necessarily a cut file for like a silhouette or a cricket machine, like something like that. But what you could do is you could make this into a JPEG or a PNG or some sort of an Andy Warhol like photograph. So what you can do is take this and using the color palette down below, you could click on any sort of color and you could make it a really nice piece of art. So for example, I'm just gonna click Control C and Control V and that's gonna copy it over. And now I'm gonna move little Wolfie here down next to the red one. And now I'm gonna click blue. And then I'm gonna click Control C, Control V. That's gonna cut and paste or copy and paste. I'm gonna move that now over so it sits underneath. And I'm gonna pick green. From there, Control C, Control V. I can move it over and I can click yellow. So that's just an example of how you could create easy wall art using Inkscape. Again, I wanna point out it's not a cut file, but this would be a good digital download if you were selling wall art or some sort of print your own artwork you could sell this on Etsy as an art print, for example. Now, if you'd like to create an actual vector, i.e. a cut file, then it's a bit more work. So here I've got a zebra, and the reason I'm selecting this file is because it's black and white, and it's got a green background, which I think I can reduce down to nothing. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. First, I'm gonna click the download button, and I'll download the original file onto my hard drive. Okay, now I've opened up my image inside of Photoshop, and you could use Affinity Photo, it doesn't really matter, but a graphics design tool. So I've just got this sitting now inside of my palette, and what I'm gonna do now is erase the green background. So this does take a bit of time, so I'm gonna use the background eraser to start, and I'm gonna make sure my tolerance is set low, and then I'm just gonna simply start painting. I'm gonna make sure that I'm taking out as much of the green as possible around little zebra guy here and it saves all the hair, which is nice. Now it's keeping a lot of the darker stuff in there. That's not what I want, so I'm gonna remove out the green, and then from there I'm gonna change it to regular eraser, and I'm gonna go in now and remove right up next to the zebra as much as possible, so I don't want anything that is the background sitting on my zebra. So I'm going along and I'm making sure with my eraser that I'm keeping the zebra's body, but I'm erasing the background. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that overall. Now I do wanna point out, if you go up to actual pixels, you can kinda of see through some of the zebra, but I'm okay with that. I'm really only caring about the black and the white because I'm gonna be jumping into Inkscape now. And I'm saving this as a PNG because it has a transparent background. 
Now I've imported my design back into Inkscape and you can see here it's not perfect but I did crop out enough of the background that I'm confident. I'm going to click on this image. I'm going to go to Path, Trace Bitmap. We'll see it pop up over here on the right hand side. And again, I can change my brightness threshold to whatever I want. I can make it lighter or darker. I'm just going to leave it at 45 in this case and I'm going to click Apply and it's going to give me an actual vector. So now I'm going to delete out my actual picture and that gives me my black and white. Now you can see here I've got a lot of black on here. So I'm actually going to go undo, control Z, control Z and I'm going to redo this lighter. So I'm going to go now to brightness threshold down to like say 30 and I'm going to click update and then apply. We'll see if that makes a difference. Now when I drag it off we can see there's many less black specks on there. So I'm going to click on my image and I'm going to go to edit paths by node and we can see there's a lot of nodes on here. Way, way too many nodes. You would not want to sell this as a vector as is. But ho ho, there is a great little workaround you can do. Go to path and go to simplify and now it will think and look at that. All the nodes now have been greatly reduced. Now it's going to change the way your picture looks. And you would want to go in here and clean this up. So as an example, you see there's these little black dots right there. When I click on Edit Paths by Node and I click on it, you can see they're right there. I'm going to highlight it, delete, highlight it, delete. So you can go through your design and you can zoom in as much as you want. And any black or white specks, you can clean up. And you can do it relatively quickly. You actually get pretty good at it pretty quickly. So all of these things over here on the left hand side, I can just get rid of these and I can actually clean up this photo or this vector rather pretty quickly. You just want to make sure that all of your nodes are selected. If you, if you highlight a node that you're not supposed to and you click it and it's like, whoa, that really changed it, you can just click Control Z or Control Z and that will undo it. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating a clean vector. So the goal here is to have as few nodes as possible. I'd want to go in and clean all of this up and make sure that these nodes are not in here. The less nodes, the fewer nodes, the better. So once I go through and I remove all the nodes that I don't want, so I have a simplified vector, then I can save this as an SVG file. I simply go File, Save As, and then Save As an SVG file. I can also go in and I can export this as well. I can export it as a PNG image, or I can save as a DXF, I can save it as an SVG, all sorts of different formatting. I hope you found this video walkthrough helpful. It's an easy way, a down and dirty way that you can make some money using public domain photographs online. Completely free to use using Inkscape. Thanks a lot for watching everybody and here's another video on how you can supercharge your digital design journey.